When America beats the drums of war over Iran, it may not always be driven by the Islamic State's nuclear intentions. Would be U.S. presidential candidates aren't shy when it comes to voicing their anti Iran rhetoric in front of America's influential Jewish community. RT's Marina Portnoy explains. America almost never misses an opportunity to praise its ally. Our ironclad commitment, and I mean ironclad to Israel's security, has meant the closest military cooperation between our two countries in history. Or point a proverbial punch at its greatest adversary. Let there be no doubt, America is determined to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon, and I will take no options off the table to achieve that goal. However, for many American Jews and Israeli supporters, Barack Obama's war of words against Tehran doesn't go far enough. It's not enough to simply state, I'm, I'm co committed to Israel's security. Uh, you have to promote policies that commit, that show that you're serious about Israel's security. Israel, uh, through these actions, feels that, um, that Obama is not committed to doing everything in his power to stop Iran from having nuclear weapons. <laughs> Iran is, a, is an existential threat to Israel, and Obama uh, should be saying uh, uh, so publicly that he will support Israel in whatever military action they, they need necessary. Morton Klein is president of the Zionist Organization of America. He says an unprecedented amount of American Jews and Israelis share his animosity, a feeling arguably underscored by the Israeli government. According to published reports, Tel Aviv would only give Washington 12 hours notice if deciding to strike Iran. I believe his policies are, are among the most hostile Israel's ever experienced of, of any president in my lifetime. Recently, it was the life of President Obama being threatened in a column written by the owner of the Atlanta Jewish Times. In an article titled, What Would You Do?, Andrew Adler listed the assassination of Obama as one way to ensure Israel's security. He wrote in part, give the go-ahead for U.S.-based Mossad agents to take out a president deemed unfriendly to Israel in order for the current vice president to take his place and forcefully dictate that the United States policy includes helping the Jewish state obliterate its enemies. I think that the, the threat made to Obama that you either play ball with us or we are going to kill you either politically or literally, I think that it is uh, a serious threat that we all have to take seriously. The American president depends upon money in order to be reelected, along with all of uh, the members of Congress. And APAC is the largest, uh, singularly largest uh, lobbying group in the United States. It is the kingmaker and the king breaker. The American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, known as APAC, declined RT's request for an interview. Meanwhile, Obama finds himself facing another election and a slew of Republican opponents banging a much louder war drum against Iran. With regards to Iran, which perhaps represents the greatest existential threat to Israel, we have to make it abundantly clear. It is unacceptable, and I take those, that word carefully, it is unacceptable for Iran to become a nuclear nation. If Rick Santorum and when Rick Santorum is president, Iran will not get a nuclear weapon because the world as we know it will be no more. I'm a clear ally of Israel. I am uh, very close to Netanyahu. Uh, I would, uh, and I've said publicly, I, I would rather plan a joint operation conventionally than push the Israelis to a point where they go nuclear. At a time when the U.S. bears the burden of a broken economy, growing social unrest, and ongoing military conflicts, starting a war with Iran would not be in America's best interest. But in order to keep a best friend, many believe President Obama will be forced to put Israel's national security first. Marina Portnaya, RT, New York.